Connolly facing a barrage of questions during yesterday's briefing. He was pressed on both the president's health and inconsistencies in earlier remarks. The fact of the matter is, is that he's doing really well. If everything continues to go well, we're going to start uh, discharge planning back to the White House. Why were you so reluctant until today to disclose that the president had been administered oxygen? Why is the president not wearing a mask in the videos and photos that have been released? Uh, the lot of folks told us that the president was in great shape. Minutes after your press conference, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told reporters that the president's vitals were very concerning. Whose statements about the president's health should we believe? The chief and I work side by side. And uh, I think his statement was misconstrued. Welcome to Trump's world. The media lapdogs. The world press wants to know how the president Get into a frenzy. There were some inconsistencies. There was some confusion as well. I mean, you look at the headlines. Of Hounding the doctors. Doctor and things that Mark Meadows had said. And I think ultimately people just want to know how the president is. What do you think? Well, I think if we're going to believe all these conspiracy theories around the president's health, Steve, uh, you have to ignore the fact that the president put out videos speaking directly to the American people, videos that he at least has 86 million followers on Twitter. So you have to discount that. He looked that. great in the last Dr. video. Conley, who was only lieutenant commander of a NATO trauma unit it's amazing. in Afghanistan, is in on this conspiracy Good job. Terms of misleading the American public. But then on top of that, you also have to believe that the president's medical team, which consists of doctors Dooley, Gibraltar, Blaylock, Campbell, Hodgkin, Klein, Nansworth, Lavopa, Carter, Meehan, and Schonow, 11 total doctors, nurses, and a pharmacist, are also in on this conspiracy. So, look, I'm seeing tweets like from CNN's national security analyst, Steve, Quote, it is very likely that Russian intelligence agencies, through signal and human intel sources embedded at Walter Reed, have more information about the president's condition than we do. You have a conservative columnist, or at least one who plays one for the Washington Post, They're cool, tweeting cool. 35 times over the weekend, Jennifer Rubin, that the president needs to be removed under the 25th Amendment. You have MSNBC asking how Speaker Pelosi is asked about continuity tweety, in terms tweet of storm. succession of government. Should something happen to both Trump and Pence, is she ready to be president? And so we're seeing this jumping ahead in, con in conspiracy theories, not by everyone. There's been response. Jennifer Rubin's been tweeting up a storm like a hundred tweets. Such a serious moment in a serious situation, Steve. Well, They're going it, crazy. It's a serious situation because the President of the United States has a potentially devastating disease right now. And, and everybody wants to know the status of it. Of course, it seemed like he wanted just to show people yesterday, I'm doing okay because he hopped in his uh, armored up Suburban and took a, a, a lap around Walter Reed yesterday. Uh, and the media reaction was, there was a lot of rage online that the president put the other secret, the Secret Service agents in that vehicle at risk. They got the triggered. Media, they were wearing the proper PPE. They were obviously... They the media got triggered. Right, so if the president may even be discharged as early as today. So again, if the president is doing so horribly, then how could he go back to the White House? And the answer is the fact that the hospital comes to him. In other words, at the White House, at all times, there is a full medical unit. This is according to the U.S. Army, full team of doctors, registered nurses, PAs, medics, and obviously uh, the, the president's medical team. So they could even perform emergency surgery at the White House if need be. So yeah, the, the Secret Service is going to be have to be around the president at all times. Obviously, they're taking the proper precautions. And for the president... Again, he understands optics to go out and to tell his supporters, not just outside the hospital, but the country and the world, that I think I'm going to be okay. That is consistent with his message from the beginning in terms of coronavirus, exactly. in terms of promoting optimism instead of doom and gloom. Exactly. Right? Do you see a double standard in the, uh, in the reaction, in the coverage? I, I, I hate to say that, though, right, because uh, it should just be consistent all around. I, I'm old enough to remember September 12th of 2001, and you didn't have this whole hysteria around George W. Bush and blame game and everything. The country rallied together. The press was responsible in terms of reporting the facts and knowing what they know. Instead of what we see now, Steve, is you see doctors being interviewed who haven't even seen the president. Yeah, they weren't president. abusive to George Bush. Going on. Mm -hmm. Instead of listening to the doctors who were in the room. They could have blamed them. Anyway, got to go. Got a car shopping thing to do right now. Azuzu Pup is on the top of the list, Steve. For not so reading his daily briefings. We did hear that story about your car. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Yeah. Exactly, okay. good point. Look at all those guests coming up for the next two hours of Boxing Friends. Wow. Kelly McEnany's coming up.